Hey folks, Dan Frio here with your market update for September 3rd, 2024. So mortgage rates, they kind of just were completely stagnant at the end of last week. What are they going to do this week? Well, it's all about jobs. The headlines right now are just right through here. Crucial jobs kicks a report, kicks off a new month. What you need to know. So why is jobs so important? It's basically what the Federal Reserve has come out and said, that's what they're going to monitor. There's, they've, they've really said kind of that they've tackled inflation. Now it's nothing about but more of where the jobs or numbers are gonna go. So I do wanna change my, my videos just a little bit. Once or twice a week, what I'm gonna kind of provide you guys with is some thoughts on where to invest your money while you're waiting for that housing opportunity to come up. I have a lot of people saying, Dan, I'm not gonna buy a house this year, I'm just not in a financial position, but where should I park my money while I'm waiting uh, to buy that first house? Well, that's a fantastic question. Just a little bit of feedback on me. My name is Dan Frio. As you guys know, you're clicking on the video, but I do have a degree in economics. I graduated from West Virginia University years ago, moved to Chicago uh, to get on the Board of Trade, end up working at a mortgage brokerage and have done mortgages ever since since and I don't really have any regrets, but I know a lot about uh, stocks, bonds and cryptocurrencies that probably a lot of people don't even realize. So I'm going to give you my take on where I'm parking some of my money. Uh, not too long ago, about a month or so ago, I said I've been moving some positions into Bitcoin and the S&P 500. I'll let you know, you know, other moves that I'm doing just to kind of give you some in insights of what I'm doing with my assets. So I don't expect you to trade on what I'm telling you to, uh, you know, I'm buying. Please don't use this video for educational purposes only. Don't trade on what I'm, what I'm doing. Make sure you do your own research. So so I want that to be clear. Uh, why I say that is if you go down through here, did you realize that for the month that we just finished, the S&P was up 2.3% in that month alone, just in one month. The Dow, the Dow Jones was up almost 2% at 1.8%. Okay, that's what we're seeing right now. The August jobs report due out on Friday will headline the economic releases uh, in the week ahead as investors look to see whether the signs of a slow uh, of a slowing in the jobs, woo, in the jobs report uh, were overstated or an early warning of a broader slowdown. Now, th that's what we need to focus in on because we have to, let's look at it this way. The Federal Reserve is saying the, the economy is way too hot. It's way too hot. Prices are going up and everything's too hot. We want to you know, bring it down, slow it down. Okay, so think it through. They want to slow down the economy. So what's going to happen with most companies? Well, if you want to slow down the country, you're, you're increasing rates, you want people to stop spending so much. Well, think it through. They're not spending, so they're not buying the stuff that the company manufactures. If they're not buying that stuff, they don't need to manufacture as much. They don't need to manufacture as much. They don't need as many employees. They don't need as many employees. There's going to be a, a cut in the jobs market, and it's just going to be spiral out of control. That's why we need to focus in on these numbers, okay? So if you think it through, well, if, if the jobs reports keep coming down and down and down and people stop or, or cutting back on their spending, well, if companies are, are, are selling less, their prices are gonna come down or their stock prices are gonna come down. That's what we wanna focus in on. Kind of just the same way as housing. If you have too much of housing, you know, you're gonna have that come down. So we wanna figure out a sweet spot. You know, is housing a good investment? Are stocks a good investment? Bonds, cryptocurrencies, or what is? So that's our whole point here. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a mortgage loan officer. I'd love to help you in this situation, but I'm, I also wanna teach you guys uh, financial, I, I, just the financial markets. And because the whole goal of the channel is wealth management, wealth creation. And that's what we're here for, to help you guys, the layman, understand the markets. So that's what we're seeing so far today. All right. So let's get to the headlines. So let's put this into action. Right down through here, we got the manufacturing numbers that just came in. Manufacturing went from almost 50, uh, 49.8 to 47.9. So a, a drop of, let's say, two points. Okay. Not good. Okay, if you're manufacturing stuff and it's going down, well, that means you don't need as much stuff. Why? Well, probably because people aren't buying it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna focus in on. Manufacturing PMI, it's kind of, we'll just say it's just a tick higher. You know, when you go to 46.8 to 47.2, and we'll say that was right in line. And then when you come to the prices, that eh, was a little hotter than expected. Last reading was 52.9, so it's eased a little bit to 52.1, it came in at 54. So prices are going up, but the production is coming down. Jolt index 
index for tomorrow. This is how many job openings and transfers there are. So is it going to continue to stay over 8 million? 8 million is a lot of people in, in transition mode. And then we get to Thursday. We have the ADP. Can you get the theme here? It's jobs, 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 initial jobless claims, servicing. And that's what we're looking, unemployment rate. This is where everybody's saying we, we want to know on Friday how much earnings are changing and how many people are working. And if this number is bad, meaning if there's a lot of people losing their jobs, well, the Federal Reserve is going to like it, but the markets, stock market, the equity markets will not. Okay, so that we have a slew of data coming in right now from there. So what we try to do on a daily basis also is figure out what the Federal Reserve is going to do. What are they truly monitoring behind the scenes? So a lot of times what we show you is interviews with former former Fed officials to get their insight, their psyche into what's going on. We have another one just out this morning. Let's take a peek at this one. And then when you come back, we're going to look at the equity markets, how they're starting the week, and then kind of what the expectations are for the equity markets and bond markets, as well as mortgage rates. Uh, we'll do that right after this interview. So please take it away with the former Fed official from Cleveland. Joining us right now is former Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester. She's now an adjunct professor at the fin of finance at the University of Pennsylvania's Warden School, also a CMC contributor, and it's great to see you this morning. Every one of these former officials are like the 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 deans or something of, of one of these major, major colleges. Kind of weird, but just saying. Uh, before we get great into it, what is, you, what is your expectation uh, both for what we're going to be hearing uh, on Friday when it comes to jobs and where you think the Fed is going to go with this next. Yeah, I mean, the jobs report is going to be an important piece of the puzzle um, in determining what the Fed's going to do at the September meeting. I don't think there's any question that the Fed's ready to start the easing cycle. I think they will have a discussion about whether they want to start with a 25 basis point move or a 50 basis point move. But more important even than the first cut is sort of the path of rate cuts coming after that. And we're going to get information from the Fed on that because we're going to have a new summary of economic projections. So I think that's going to be really one of the key pieces of information coming out of the meeting. I mean, the jobs report, you know, job, we know the job market has been moderating. Um, and I use that word um, moderation as opposed to weakening, because remember, the job market has been quite tight. So we've seen this loosening in conditions. Um, the chair coming out of Jackson Hole said he wanted to not go um, much weaker than where they are now in terms of the job market. And I think that's why there's been this real focus on that upcoming report. But remember, the Fed looks at all the data coming out, not just one report. Well, so but let's just talk about this Friday, because there is a sense that, you know, is good news going to be good news? If the news is too good, is that actually bad news? Because then the Fed maybe won't cut as much as people had anticipated. Put us inside I mean, the room. Yeah, I mean, look, the Fed wants to have strong labor markets. So and from the point of view of the FOMC and their focus on maximum employment and price stability, having a good, solid jobs report is a good thing for the committee. I don't think there's any question about that. But they also recognize that, you know, they, inflation has been coming down and it's time to start moving the interest rate, the nominal Fed funds rate, their policy rate down as inflation and short-term inflation expectations have moved down. Otherwise, you're actually inadvertently tightening policy, and that's not what the economy is calling for now. So I think they're going to want to see that labor markets remain healthy um, as one of the pieces of, okay, we can now start this tightening cycle and we will be able to kind of move the rate down with the economy telling us how you know, quickly we need to move it down in order to maintain those healthy labor markets. So from the FOMC's point of view, and I would say for the economy's point of view, you want to see a good labor market report um, coming out this Friday. That's not going to change people's minds on, you know, whether to start cutting. I mean, I, right. the chair was very clear, very extremely clear in Jackson Hole that the committee's ready to do that. I think the question in the room will be, you start out with a 50 or a 25, and I think they won't really determine that going in until it gets closer to the time. Loretta, what do you make of just, I, I know you're not an equities person, but of, of the move in the equity market, the Wall Street Journal has a piece out this morning uh, just talking about all the sort of new 401k millionaires and folks who have made a, a, a lot of money during this period and how much that, in terms of the wealth effect and other things, that impacts the way the Fed thinks. Well, no, I mean, the Fed does look at financial conditions. 
This is a, 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 yet another one. What I was saying is the, the haves and have nots. Here's the wealth effect. If you have money and you put it in the markets, you're doing very, very well. Every day, the, one of the indices is hitting a record high. So this is where my whole goal, truly my whole goal is to help people, you know, understand, you know, quit having the negative thoughts. Everything's going to crash. The world's going to end. The housing market's going to crash. This is, you have to understand the markets in general and how you can even make money when the markets are going down okay so that's what i just want to i just want to you guys to understand where my my heart is i guess and one part of that condition is what's going on in the equity mar markets because we do see a wealth effect in the economy but again it's one of the pieces of financial conditions that it looks at it doesn't sort of focus only on what's going on with stock markets it looks broadly defined and financial conditions have been you know tight over this whole cycle as the fed has raised its policy rate at different times, up and down, some of the indices are saying that you know things are back to neutral in terms of those financial condition indices now. So that's one piece of the information the Fed looks at, certainly, but it's not a focus on sort of targeting the financial markets. It looks at it in terms of our financial conditions too tight to support healthy labor markets and a return fully to 2% inflation. If, in fact, the, the Fed does lower rates, and I, I think, you know, whether it's 25 basis points or 50 basis points, I imagine there's going to be uh, finger pointing uh, in the political world about what the Fed is doing, the independence of the Fed, if they're trying to encourage you know, one candidate to win over the other. In this case, I could, I could see someone like former President Trump suggesting uh, that this is an effort to, uh, make former, or, uh, to, to make the vice president the president. I know the Fed likes to say that that doesn't, uh, weigh on anything, but do you think it even weighs the different the distinction between a 25 basis point cut and a 50 basis point cut? Yeah, honestly, I really don't think it does. I think they have to do what they always do, which is look at the economy, look at where it's going, look at its policy rate to see that it's you know aligned with where the economy is going and the achievement of its uh, dual mandate goals. Politics doesn't enter the room. They're going to look at this from the point of view of the economy. What is the economy telling us that the Fed needs to do with policy to get it aligned so that it can fully reach 2% inflation at the same time maintaining healthy labor markets? And there's going to be criticism on whatever they do. And they take that in stride and know that's going to be, you know, what it is. But that's part of the environment. And they have to focus on, like, stick to the knitting. They have to focus on doing what they can do with their policy tools to achieve the dual mandate that Congress gave it. And that's what they're going to be focused on in that room. So that's what the report is. And so she even says they're going to cut. How much are they going to cut? I'm still on the proponent of they're going to cut 25 basis points, 50 basis points is only if the, the really the markets are, are weaker than uh, the, 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 the Fed is expecting. Let's go over to the broad indices right now, and they're getting hammered. <clears throat> we have the Dow Jones down 400, S&P down 65, NASDAQ down almost 300. Oh, the nice thing is oil is crashing right now. Can this get to below in the 60s? Uh, that, that we'll, we'll check on that. Cryptocurrencies are probably up. No, cryptocurrencies are down as well. So it's, uh, it's just a sell-off all across the board right through here. Dow Jones tumbles nearly 500 points to start trending on slower fears picking up again. So again, what they're saying right through here is the markets, the Federal Reserve, don't fight the Fed. They want the economy to start slowing down and that that's their whole goal and their mandate what's going to do. Another piece of this puzzle is what is the worst month normally for stocks? It is September. So what I'm doing with a lot of my financial positions is I'm just going to give you one one tidbit on this. We know, we know that the Federal Reserve is cutting rates, okay? So they're bringing down yields, all right? One piece of that is the, the Treasury yields. If yields come down, you know, what does that mean for you as an investment? Well, if you go over here, right through here, when rates are coming down, you, you, it's probably a good time to buy long-term Treasuries, okay? And you do your own research on this, long-term Treasuries to take account for the, the, the rates coming down. So as the rates come down, prices are going up, you're going to make some money there. Okay, so that's how that works. So I'm just giving give you one tidbit for today. The video is longer than I expected. Check out long-term treasuries. 
and there's different positions you can get in there. So that would be my one take right now. And then also, if you're not using any cryptocurrencies, I'm still a huge proponent of a Bitcoin. Just gradually moving, I'll say some play money in there, you know, maybe 10%, 5% of your portfolio, just to capture uh, some of that appreciation because the, the, I'm expecting that to have a nice little parabolic move here, here soon. So that's what we're seeing right through here. Next piece of the puzzle is the Federal Reserve. I don't know if you guys realize, the Federal Reserve is meeting in two weeks. It's 15 days away. What, what are they going to do? So if we go to the CME FedWatch tool, it's telling us what's the probability they're going to change rates. If you go down through here, what you have to know is the current rate, the current federal funds rate is 5.25 to 5.5. Okay, so we go to the CME FedWatch tool to figure out where we're going to go from here, what the Federal Reserve is going to do at the next meeting. So at the next meeting on 918, there's a 65% chance that they're going to put these, uh, the federal funds rate at five to five and a quarter. Well, currently it's at five and a quarter to five and a half. So that means there's gonna be a quarter percent cut. So there's a 65% chance that they're gonna cut a quarter percent, not 50 basis points or more. Now, at the following meeting in November, now this is where they're basically saying there's almost a 70% chance at that time they're gonna cut and the rate will be four and a half to four seven five. So this is where we're gonna kind of monitor things, but I'm, I'm still on the proponent of they're gonna cut once here, they're gonna cut probably once again through here, and then it's just gonna be completely data dependent. So that what that means is you gotta watch me every day to figure out what the heck's gonna go on through this. So last but not least, who am I? You remember at the beginning of the video, I'm like, okay, here's, here's how you get this rate. And if you're this credit score and all this, but if you're not, if you're not in this realm, what can you do? Well, my name is Dan Frio. I do a video every day. I'm actually a mortgage loan officer. I've been doing this for 35 years. I'd love to help you. We offer conventional FHA, VA, USDA, non-QM, DSCRs, down payment assistance programs right through here, fine grants, national grants, Chicagoland, everything you need to know about mortgages. Okay, go to therateupdate.com. Here's our website. Okay, what makes us a little bit different? Well, I work at ServeBank. ServeBank is one of the country's largest mortgage servicers, and it's actually also a federal bank. Okay, that means I'm federally licensed. I'm licensed all over the country, as well as Puerto Rico. So if you're out there and you're like, Dan, I'd love to use your services. You seem to know you know the mortgage business. You have a tune on what's going on with rates and all this other stuff. How do we use you? Well, there's two ways to do that. You can hit the apply now button, and it's going to answer you some questions. And then you're also going to schedule an appointment with us so we can answer all those questions that you have. Or or you can call in or email me. Scroll down to the bottom of the website, and here it is. Our 800 number is right through there, 844-775-5626, or you can reach me directly, yeah, that's me, at dan at therateupdate.com. So thank you so much for watching, guys. God bless, I'll come back today at the closing bell to let you guys know how far did this go? Did it really continue to deteriorate? And, where in the heck did mortgage rates go from here? Because right now we have the bond market up 13 ticks. What that means is mortgage rates are gonna drop about five basis points. So if you go over through here, don't be surprised if we're in the 6.3s uh, by the end of the day. Can this get to six and a quarter? Can we even top maybe the 5% range by the end of the week? Well, with some cooperation from the jobs market, I think we can. Thanks for watching guys, God bless. I'll see you back here later at the closing bell. Take care.